And I'm back once again at chapter 9, verse 27 of the book of 1 Kings, picking right up. And Hiram sent in the navy his servants, shipmen who had knowledge of the sea with the servants of Solomon. Notes. In other words, the Tyrians, or the Tyrians helped Solomon form his little fleet here. Verse 28. And they came to Ophir and fetched from thence gold, 420 talents, and brought it to King Solomon. Notes. Uh, it is not exactly known where Ophir actually was. However, if anyone has any suggestions, I am open to them. Chapter 10. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to prove him with hard questions. Notes. Uh, Sheba, who was a grandson of Cush, uh, settled in Abysnia. Even though many Gentile kings and potentates came to Solomon, none of these monarchs are mentioned particularly except for the queen of Sheba, the Holy Spirit reserving that dignity for a woman. She is further honored by the Lord himself in Matthew chapter 12, verse 42, where he predicts her reappearance in the resurrection. What an honor it is. Now evidently the queen of Sheba heard many wonderful things about Solomon, but it seems that at first she did not believe the reports. But after a little, moved by its repetition, she determines to put the matter to the rest. <clears throat> or to the test, I should say. Uh, she undertakes a long and expensive journey, and her quest was not disappointed in the slightest. Now, how many today, as this African queen of old, hear of the fame of the greater than Solomon, and like her, they do not believe the report, but unlike her, they do not bestir themselves to test what they have heard? Well, in the coming kingdom age, great men and women will come from all over the world to sit at the feet of Jesus and will do so to have their hard questions answered as it regards agriculture, industry, science, medicine, and wealth, and, you know, other such things. Well, just like Solomon of old times, our Savior will give these ambassadors the answers to their very, very hard questions. Verse 2. And she came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bore spices, and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. Notes Our Lord lays great stress on this pretty long journey in Matthew chapter 12 verse 42 and Luke chapter 11 verse 31. You see, that which was in her heart... Uh, well, it pertained to spiritual questions which were very, very uh, readily answered by King Solomon. All the others, uh, the gold and the precious stones and such, they were merely window dressing by comparison to the great questions of deity and eternity. Uh, she basically committed herself to God after all these hard questions were uh, eventually answered by Solomon. Uh, smart woman. <laughs> Verse 3. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king which he told her not. Notes. In other words, whatever the questions were, the greater question, as in the text uh, dictates, was spiritual. She now knew that this was the uh, that it was God who had given Solomon these great gifts of wisdom. Verse four. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all of Solomon's wisdom and the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, uh, and their clothing, I should say, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of the Lord, there was no spirit in her. Notes. In other words, she was just completely taken back by how smart the guy actually was. And this is indicative of what will take place in the coming kingdom age when people from all over the world will come to Christ and for the first time in human history, man will see what this planet can be like with Satan locked away and put in chains for good and the Lord Jesus Christ reigning as King of Kings and Lord of Lords forever. It's going to be a great day, my friends. Verse 6. 
And she said to the king, It was a true report that I heard in my own land of your acts and of your great wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came and my eyes had seen it, and behold, the half was not told me. Notes. Uh, even though it is a true report, uh, many today, even most, will not believe the Lord, but in the coming kingdom age, they will, and they will do it unreservedly. Scripture. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame which I had actually heard. Notes. Uh, whatever can be said about Christ, of whom Solomon was a type, the half has not actually been told to us yet. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 through 10 documents that. Verse 8. Happy are your men, happy are these your servants, which stand continually before you, and that hear your great wisdom. Uh, notes. Well, happy are all of those who follow Christ and what he has done for us at the cross. Verse 9. Blessed be the Lord your God, which delighted in you to set you on the throne of Israel. Because the Lord loved Israel forever, therefore made he the king to do judgment and justice. Notes. Uh, she's proclaiming the fa uh, this is proclaiming the fact that this queen now knows who God is, and she knows the Lord in a personal way, having thereby accepted him as the Lord of her life. Smart woman once again. Verse 10. And she gave the king an hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices very great store and precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices as these which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. Notes. Uh, and to put this more flatly, this was a king's ransom in gold and silver and precious stones and uh, spices of every great store. Uh, about sixty million dollars in our current uh, values. In the coming kingdom age though, of which all of this is a typology, such will be given to Christ, but always and without exception, what he gives back will be far, far greater. Verse 11. And the navy also of Hiram, that brought gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir great plenty of almug trees and precious stones. And the king made of the almug trees pillars for the house of the Lord, and for the king's house, harps also, and psalteries for singers. There came no such almug trees, nor were seen unto this day. Notes. Now, almug wood in those ancient times, and in some cases today, is used for ma uh, making tools and such, as you could imagine. But they can make some very, very, uh, very, very great musical instruments. I'm pretty sure if you were to just simply Google that, you could find an example of that. Verse 13. And King Solomon gave the queen of Sheba all her desire whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. Notes. Well, she left with far more than what she came with. According to the custom of that time, tradition says that she bore Solomon a son. Melamelek was his name, from whom uh, the past sovereigns of Ethiopia, which is also called uh, Ab uh, Abyssina, I think I said that wrong, Abyssina, and they claim to derive their descent from that even to this very day. Verse 14, hopefully I won't chop any other names up. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was 603 score and 66 uh, <laughs> Let me read that again. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred three score and six talents of gold. Notes: This is about three hundred fifty million in uh, currency right now. However, it is not it is not possible presently to know their true worth, uh, simply because we do not know the purchasing power of gold during the time of Solomon. And it could have been quite a bit more. It could have been several billion dollars for all we know. King's Ransom, once again, and we'll have to pick up in chapter 10, verse 15 of the book of 1 Kings. Thank you, and God bless.